Thank you for checking out this video highlight for our article in Biotechnology and Bioengineering. My name is Tushar Patel. I'm a graduate student under Dr. Scott Banta at Columbia University in the Department of Chemical Engineering. Our goal with this work was to create a whole cell biocatalyst in E. coli for the hydration of CO2. We chose to do so to eliminate purification costs and also increase the recyclability of our catalysts. In order to create our whole cell biocatalyst, we used periplastic expression of carbonic anhydrase. We chose two different forms of carbonic anhydrase and two different liter peptides to create our catalyst. In gram-negative bacteria, such as E. coli, the periplastic space is in between the inner and outer membranes of the bacteria. In order to localize to this space, we chose the PELB and G3 liter peptides. Both are approximately 20 amino acids long and are fused to the end terminus of the protein in order to direct them into the periplasm. For the catalytic component, we chose carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrases are zinc-bound metalloenzymes that are newly ubiquitous in nature. They are among the fastest known enzymes, with KCATs ranging from 10 to the 4th to 10 to the 6th per second. They are used in many natural processes, such as pH regulation in the blood and photosynthesis. Since there are so many forms of carbonic anhydrase, we selected two to begin with. The two we chose are CAB and CAN. CAB is a beta-type carbonic anhydrase that is one of the most thermostable types ever found. CAM is a gamma-type carbonic anhydrase and is used to oxidative environments, which the periplasm is. Both of these genes were optimized, synthesized, and cloned using standard molecular biology. To begin characterization, we first wanted to determine the location and amount of enzyme per cell. In order to do so, we first treated the cells using osmotic shock. This separates the periplasmic and cytosolic fractions of the cell. Then, running these samples on a western blot, we're able to determine where the enzyme is located. For all of our catalysts, we determined that most of the enzyme is located in the paraplasm, as expected. Then, we can quantify these bands by using a standard curve generated using the Cal module. By using this analysis, we found that PELB actually generates more enzyme per cell than the G3 peptide does. The next step in characterization is to determine the kinetics of our whole cell biocatalyst as compared to their purified enzyme counterparts. In order to do so, we use stop flow spectroscopy, which allowed us to back out kinetic parameters for our enzymes as well as our whole cells. What we found is that there's about an order of magnitude loss in activity for the whole cell as compared to the purified enzymes. Now this is expected since we have an added transport barrier from the outer membrane of the cell. The trade-off to this loss in activity is that the enzymes are actually stabilized when immobilized in the whole cell. At 95 degrees, a smaller percentage of activity was lost for the whole cells than for their purified enzymes. We also saw that, operationally, the whole cell catalyst retained 100% of their original activity after 24 hours of use. As a potential application, we wanted to show that our whole cell biocatalyst could be used in carbon mineralization. Carbon mineralization is a carbon capture and storage technique which combines carbonate ions with a divalent cation to precipitate as a carbonate salt. This has been touted as a much more permanent solution than geologic sequestration. For our experiments, we chose to precipitate calcium carbonate in the presence of our whole cell biocatalysts and also the relevant controls. By doing so, we saw a statistically significant increase in the amount of precipitation seen using our whole cell biocatalysts as opposed to the control experiments. Hopefully in this video, we've shown you that we were able to successfully clone, express, and characterize a carbonic and hydrase containing whole cell biocatalyst for CO2 hydration. For more information, please refer to our paper from the link below. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge my advisor, Dr. Scott Banta, our collaborator, Dr. Alyssa Park, and my colleague, Ed Swanson, for all of their help. I'd also like to thank ARPA-E and the Department of Energy for funding this work. Thank you.